Okay, so in this video, we will consider our first class of trigonometric integrals, namely trigonometric integrals involving sines and cosines with at least one odd power. And all we need is the following. The fact that sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x is equal to 1. Simple consequence of Pythagoras' theorem. And of course you can isolate in here either for sine squared or cos squared. So you can write sine squared of x is 1 minus cos squared of x, or you can solve for cos squared as of course 1 minus sine squared. And we'll see that we, if we use the given trigonometric identities, these integrals come down to a simple u substitution. So here's our first example. Suppose we are asked to integrate sine squared of x cosine cubed dx. The idea will be always to either factor a sine of x and express everything in terms of cosine or factor a cos of x and express everything else in terms of sine. And we always factor something from the odd power. So here the odd power is on the cosine, so we'll factor a cosine. So we'll have sine squared of x cosine squared times cos of x dx. And as the derivative of sine of x is cos of x, we want the remaining part of the expression to be in terms of sine of x. Well, cos squared, we can replace by 1 minus sine squared. And now we can make our u substitution. Everything is a function of sine of x times a cos of x dx. So we let u be sine of x. And of course, if u equals sine, they both have the same differential. So the differential of u is a differential of sine of x, which is, of course, cosine of x times dx. And so now we can replace everything in terms of u. If u is sine of x, sine squared is u squared times 1 minus sine squared, 1 minus u squared. And as you can see, cos of x dx is simply du. And now we have to integrate a simple polynomial in terms of u, and this is essentially trivial. Multiply out and the power rule. The only thing, of course, is initially we had an integral in terms of x, so we want to give our final answer as a function of x. And so we simply replace u by sine of x. And so our antiderivative is sine cubed of x over 3 minus sine to the 5 of x over 5 plus c. And if you wanted to, you could factor a sine cubed from both expressions. So there you go. Let's consider now one more example. And always keep in mind we want to factor a trig function from the odd power. So we just had sine squared cos cubed, only the cosine had a power that was odd, so we factor the cos of x. But what if both powers are odd? So what about considering the integral of sine cubed of x cos cubed of x? So the exact same integral as before, but instead of sine squared, so sine having an even power, now we consider sine cubed having an odd power. So both sine and cosine have an odd power. The question is now, well, which do we factor? Do we factor a sine of x or do we factor a cos of x? 
The answer is it doesn't matter. So let's verify this. So in our first solution, we'll factor a cos of x. So we have sine cubed of x cos squared of x times cos of x dx. Because we factor the cos, we want everything else in terms of sine, but cos squared is 1 minus sine squared. And of course we let u be sine of x. The differential of u is cos of x dx. And if we replace, we get the integral of u cubed, 1 minus u squared. And of course cos of x dx is du. Multiply out. We now have a simple polynomial. Use the power rule. And of course, replace everything back in terms of x. u is sine of x. And there you go. Of course, you could factor a sine to the 4 from both terms. So this is our antiderivative to the function sine cubed cos cubed by factoring a cos of x because cosine had an odd power, so we knew this was going to work. Let's see what happens now if we factor a sine of x instead of a cos of x. Oops, I factored a sine of x, so I forgot my sine. Let me just squeeze it in here. So sine of x dx. And now because we factored a sine of x, we want everything else to be a function of cosine. So we replace sine squared by 1 minus cos squared. And now we let u be cosine of x. The differential of du, of course, will be in here. Be careful. The derivative of cosine is a negative sine of x. But we take the differential, so we get negative sine of x dx. As we have a sine of x dx, we want to solve for sine of x dx. Therefore, sine of x dx is obviously negative du. And now we can replace. So we'll have u is cosine, so 1 minus u squared. u cubed. And sine of x dx is negative du. Now I'll use a negative here, and I'll bring it here. So I'll negate 1 minus u squared, which will give me u squared minus 1. And once again, we have a simple polynomial, multiply out and use the power rule. Go back in terms of x, replacing u by cosine of x, so we get cos of the 6 over 6. minus cosine to the 4 over 4 plus c. And if you notice, this answer looks a little different than our previous answer. right? We solved the same integral twice using two different u substitutions. The first time, letting u be sine of x, we have this as our antiderivative. The second time, using u being cos of x, we arrive at this as our antiderivative. But they're both valid answers. The only difference is that 
this answer and this one differ by some arbitrary constant. So if you replace in here the cosine squared by 1 minus sine squared, you would arrive at this answer with a leftover constant, which could be absorbed into the arbitrary constant c. So why am I showing you this? Well, keep in mind that sometimes there are multiple ways of solving a trigonometric integral. So you might arrive at a different answer than the one I'm providing in the answer key. So just keep this in mind. If your answer looks different, it does not mean you made a mistake. It might just mean you used a different substitution. Let's do one last example. So what if we want to integrate the fifth power of cosine of 3x? Now here it's pretty straightforward. We only have cosines, there's an even pa there's an odd power, so we must factor a cosine. Because we factored a cosine, we must replace everything else in terms of sine, but now we have cos to the 4 and not cos squared. Well, it's easily fixed as cos to the 4 is of course cosine squared all squared. And now we can replace cos squared by 1 minus sine squared. And as we have everything now as a function of sine of x times cos of, well, sine of 3x, cos of 3x dx, we will let u be sine of 3x. So the differential of u is the differential of sine of 3x, and here be careful to apply your chain rule. Derivative of sine, cosine, chain rule times the derivative of 3x, which is 3 times, of course, the x as we take the differential. We want to solve for cos of 3x dx, so we divide both sides by 3, and so du over 3 is cosine of 3x dx, and now we're good to go. So we integrate 1 minus u squared, all squared, and cos of 3x dx is simply du over 3. So we can now do two things. Factor the 1 over 3 outside as a constant multiple. We have a polynomial. By squaring it, we can use the power rule. So we'll have 1 minus 2u squared plus u to the 4 du. So power rule. u minus 2 thirds u cubed plus u to the 5 over 5, of course, plus c. And finally, we want to return to a function of x, so we replace u by sine of 3x. And that's it. Of course, if you choose to, you could factor a sine of 3x from all three terms. So keep in mind, if you ever have a trigonometric integral involving only sines and cosines, with at least one odd power, from this odd power, factor whether a cos or a sine, and then if you factor a cos, replace everything else as a function of sine. If you factor a sine, replace everything else as a function of cos. And then with a simple u substitution, you will find the antiderivative. And that's it.